I bought some stuff over Christmas, uh, Christmas presents for me. And the first of the parcels arrived uh, a couple of days ago at the post office. So my favorite place, stepping back to 1954 and recovering a, a parcel is always good fun. So which was the parcel that came in? It was the one I was expecting from Navor. So yes, it's Shippies. Um, I've already opened the box a little bit and I thought we'll start to have a look at what's actually contained in there. So here we go. First off, let's just get this sort of lined up in roughly the right direction. Okay, so when the box came in it, of course, is an old style hard copy catalog from Navor um, listing their products and containing, of course, the hard copy old style order form where you can actually hand write, put in the post and send off to Navor for your goodies. So what did we get? Well, they ordered some fleet packs. One of the fleet packs was the Argentine World War II fleet pack. So um, let's have a look at what was in that one. Well, we know what was in there, shippies. Um, as always, one three thousand scale naval ships. And the nice thing about these fleet packs is there's a list of Argentine fleet ships with definitions for use with uh, general quarters rules, um, version two. And we see the Merino and uh, the Rivadavia there as uh, BBs or battleships. Um, a couple of cruisers, including the Almirante Brown, La Argentina, and then the destroyers that uh, the Argentines carried, the Cervantes class and the Buenos Aires class, and then the submarines that are listed underneath that. The other side is a brief discussion of um, the vessels, the layout of what the vessels contain. So, for example, the battleship Moreno uh, was launched in 1911, completed in 1917, so very much a World War I style battleship. Tonnage of 27,720 long tons, I'm thinking that is, with a speed of about 22.5 knots. It was armed with 12 12 inch guns, uh, secondary armament of 12 6 inch guns, and then some anti aircraft armament of 3 inch guns and 40 millimeters. Um, as with uh, battleships of the time from the First World War, um, it was also armed with a couple of torpedo tubes. Um, an 11 inch belt and three inch deck armor. And the list goes on for the rest of the vessels. Um, there's also a brief description of the uh, Argentinian fleet from the end of the First World War, um, where most of it was obsolete up until where we found it with the um, Second World War. So the Argentinians, um, as it's noted, they tended to hold on to their obsolete vessels long after the end of their useful lives sometimes using them as training vessels, uh, many of them existing still in 1939. So what was in the box? Well, as we mentioned, there were some submarines. So we've got three Santa, Cla Santa Fe class submarines. These are tiny little things, as you can see. Um, I guess the heavy weapons, the heavy guns in there, come in the Merino class uh, battleships. This will give you an idea of the size of them. Um, these are all one three thousand scale. The cruiser uh, La Argentina and two of the Viencinco de Mayo, or well, the Amorante Brown, basically, and sister ship. Two cruisers there. And then a bunch of uh, destroyers. The two classes of destroyers I mentioned. So the first question you're obviously, or you're thinking of asking, I guess, is why buy an Argentinian fleet from the Second World War? Well, sometimes it's nice to have a little knock-up battle, a little knock-up war game. And 
the Argentinians and other South American fleets are two fleets that don't often get uh, seen on a tabletop. Um, and, you know, they're, they're good to match up against each other. So the second fleet pack I bought was, of course, as an opposition, the Brazilian fleet of World War II. And it's the il illustration on the front is the Minas Gerais. Uh, please pardon my lousy Portuguese. Um, I'm sure it could be pronounced a lot better than I'm managing. And again, let's have a look at what's in the packet. Well, as with the Argentinians, we have the ship definitions for use with the general quarters rules. And again, we've got the three uh, battleships for the, or two battleships, I should say, for the um, Brazilians, the Minas Gerais and the Sao Paulo. And uh, I'm looking at these, I think there's uh, just two versions of the Sao Paulo. Then we have a couple of light cruisers, uh, the Bahia and the Rio Grande del Sul. And then we're into a list of destroyers and some submarines. So again, uh, on the other side, the list of the vessels so uh, and their armament. The two Brazilian battleships are coastal battleships, so not quite as um, uh, perhaps seaworthy or not designed for uh, deep ocean work uh, like the Argentinian ships. A couple of cruisers and then a full range of destroyers. Um, and then there's the notes about the Brazilian Navy at the outbreak of the Second World War. It was in the middle of a uh, program to modernize itself. Um, there'd always been some sort of uh, arms race in South America between the Brazilians and the Argentinians. Um, so it's not uh, really surprising. So in the packet, well, first off, we've got some of the Wii submarines, the Tupi. These were completed in 1938, so were relatively modern. Um, these were actually, uh, I think, purchased from the Italians. So they were previously the Italian submarines, Nengelhi, uh, Gonda, and uh, Asiangi. Again, you'll have to forgive my lousy Italian, let alone Spanish. Then we have the Minas Gerais, or Minas Gerais. Um, these were built in 1910, and the Sister Sao Paulo was rebuilt in 1934 uh, to 39, towards the uh, start of the Second World War. Um, and we have here the vessels that make this up. Uh, as you can see, they're, you know, coastal style uh, battleships. They've got uh, a broad waist, um, the solid mast, the center, and then uh, the original ship itself had, or uh, shown in the packet above here. So two of those make up the battleship component to the fleet. And then, as I mentioned before, we've got um, couple of cruisers, the Bahia, um, so toss those down, and then loads of destroyers, large ocean going destroyers, uh, the Acre built on the, or based on the British H class, uh, the Yaroina also built on the GH class destroyers of the British, and then you've got the Marsilio Dias, um, the Martin Howe, which was based on a British K-class destroyer porpoise, and, and one more submarine. So that makes up the Brazilian feet, so, fleet. So together, they, uh, they make a, a nice opposition for the Argentinians. Uh, what, a, what a lot of people don't realise is uh, the Brazilians in particular were uh, active... Um, active with the Allies in World War II, um, providing ships in the Atlantic. Uh, we don't really hear much of their contribution because, frankly, they didn't, uh, didn't do much in the way of fighting battles against uh, the Germans or the Italians. Uh, but they were there as part of the Allies for the, uh, through the Second World War. 
Okay, what else did I order? Well, I topped up my supply of modern vessels. So let's, let's stop mucking around here. I bought several fleet packs. Um, at the moment I have, uh, as you might have noticed from before, um, a, a Chinese modern fleet, a uh, Japanese modern fleet and an Indian modern fleet. So to round out the collection, um, I added to that the Dutch or um, modern fleet vessels, Italian, French, US and Great Britain. And I will admit straight off, I was thinking of holding off getting the US uh, ships from Navwar and instead uh, buying them from GHQ. Um, the GHQ models are just absolutely superb. The Navwar make, uh, Navwar make very good wargaming models uh, at a very good price. GHQ makes superb models at a very, very high price. Um, and GHQ is at a uh, larger scale to Navwar, so it, and it's appreciably larger when you put vessels on the table near each other. So in the end, I thought, meh, I might as well get uh, the Americans in, in Navwar as well. So what's in the packs? Well, the Dutch, which I haven't really got around to opening yet. Let's just slide these guys off to the back. The Dutch modern fleet consists of, again, as with all things Navor, we have details on the starter packs, uh, the British, the US, the Soviets, uh, which I have in stock. I haven't got around to painting those yet. The Italians, um, the French, the Japanese and Chinese and Indians, which I do have, and then the Dutch. So the Dutch pack contains um, six attack submarines, um, four guided missile frigates or FFGs of the Carol Dorman class, um, six FFGs of the Courtenay class, two FFGs from the Heemskirk, uh, two DDGs, guided missile destroyers of the Tromp class, six more frigates of the Evertsen class, and three minesweeters, sweepers of the Alkmaar. And again, you'll have to forgive my poor Dutch accents. Um, I should, I'm sure I'll be teased by my Dutch friends about this. So here are four of the Dutch submarines, um, the Silo or Zilo class, uh, four Dutch diesel powered attack submarines, and then let's see what else have we got here. Um, oh, so much, so many toys. I know you enjoy opening packets like this as much as I do. What else have we got? We've got another three or another four Zilu class here. So that's eight submarines in total, um, which is obviously for wargaming purposes, probably a few submarines too many. However, uh, we'll get by with it. Then we've got some of the Evertsen modernized Van Speck uh, FFGs. These were modernized in uh, 1977. And there's a couple of those. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six frigates to make up uh, that lot. As I mentioned, we've got the... Um, let's see if we can get some sort of order here. So the quarter, uh, the Carl Dorman. Um, did I see them? Sorry, the Carol Dorman Dutch frigates, which are quite large. Um, and again, with Navor, there's a little sheet in there describing uh, the details of the vessels. But these were about three thousand three hundred tons. Um, I'm, I know many people have asked what the difference is these days between a destroyer and a frigate. 
quite frankly, um, I think it's just what you call them. The French tend to refer to their vessels as frigates rather than any distinctions between destroyers and frigates. In other navies where the DDG and the FFG classes are used, the difference tends to be based around um, weight. Both DDGs and FFGs have roughly the same number of um, crew and they have similar combat roles these days, but the DDGs just tend to be larger, say around five, 6,000 tonnes, whereas the FFGs tend to be around 3,000 tonnes. And that seems to be a reasonable uh, discussion of the difference between a frigate and a destroyer these days. So we've got four Contenar class uh, guided missile frigates or FFGs, sorry, six Contenar frigates. And there were 10 overall in the class. So again, the Dutch don't have any aircraft carriers. So we tend to get a lot of uh, vessels as in frigates and destroyers. We've got a couple of Jacob van Hins, uh, Heemskerk um, anti-aircraft frigates and the Alkmaar class uh, mine hunters which are as you can see here tiny little things so uh, that'll make a nice target for something on the table and of course the guided missile destroyers the uh, uh, Tromp and again these are about the same size as the Dutch frigates. So I was saying the difference between a destroyer and a frigate is, is not such a clear-cut thing anymore. Um, with all of these on the wargaming table, most of them will have some sort of uh, ASW helicopter or an over-the-horizon type helicopter for um, identifying targets off into the distance and uh, for acquiring and uh, helping to guide uh, surface-to-surface -surface missiles in on them. Uh, the, the rules I'll be using for modern naval war games are probably the shipwreck rules. All right, I don't propose to open all of the packs tonight. Um, no, I probably will. <laughs> Go on, you've got time to sit and watch. So the Italian uh, modern fleet... Um, we'll dive in here quickly. Just cover off something, some significant vessels. Um, so when we think of uh, aircraft carriers, we think of the Russian vessels, uh, the, the uh, English and the Americans. Of course, the Italians are a European power with aircraft carriers, uh, with aircraft carrier, the Jeppi Sep. Giuseppe Garibaldi um, is a light aircraft carrier. Um, it's been in service since about 1985. Uh, it's kind of uh, small and light compared to um, US and uh, recent English carriers. This is weighing in at about um, 13,000 tonnes. Um, it's weapon basically a, a 16 seeking helicopter. So it's really a helicopter carrier uh, at a pinch, it could probably um, fly some V-style uh, aircraft uh, off its deck. They don't require so much deck space. And again, we've got a fine collection of Italian frigates. Um, that's interesting. We'll have a look at those separately. So, uh, yeah, Italian frigates to, uh, to have a play with. And some guided missile destroyers. Uh, which are in this case somewhat bigger, 4,300 ton vessels. Uh, submarines, of course, as we've uh, mentioned, these are the small Italian attack submarines. Um, the Ordis, Ordace, the Italian uh, destroyers from the 1970s, very nice looking vessels, quite elegant. And something that's a little interesting and different, the Italian. Spavario class hydrofoils. Um, so again, these will be uh, fun to put together. But you can see that there's a tiny little uh, vessel there and it sits on this base, which makes it look like it's traveling at speed across the water. 
So that's in the Italian pack. Um, the French also have an aircraft carrier, um, so we'll give that a skip, and then maybe we'll cut straight to the Americans and see what's in the US pack. And I'll leave the British for another day, I think, maybe. Um, the American pack, which is considerably heavier, I must admit, than anybody else's, as you can hear. And the reason for that is the Nimitz class carrier, which is just huge compared to the other vessels that we've opened. So uh, that'll get given a special paint job. Um, the Nimitz, of course, was uh, uh, released into service, completed around 1975, famous for that science fiction movie, of course. And then also in the, uh, the pack, we've got some uh, Los Angeles nuclear attack submarines um, and Ohio ballistic missile submarines. These submarines are quite huge compared to like the Italian subs. Um, the Aegis missile cruisers. So again, the Americans tend to have some uh, mid-size vessels. So that'll be the Bunker Hill. Uh, the Airlie Burke um, US guided missile destroyers. Um, again, these are around 9,000 tons weight, so uh, somewhat larger. And the USS Tarawa, an amphibious assault ship, which uh, when it's painted up will provide a target on the table as well for probably the Chinese. We'll see if we can do something with freedom of navigation around the islands in the South China Sea. Uh, we've also got some FFGs, um, the American ones, the uh, Knox class, and a, a Navy oiler, again, as another target. So it's a fine mix of vessels in the American pack. Um, go on, I think I'll open the British up as well, just for the heck of it. I'll keep the French as a surprise for when they're painted. And the British pack contains an invincible and an, well, two carriers, invincible and illustrious, both uh, light aircraft carriers from the 1980s. Again, we've got some uh, nuclear powered attack submarines and uh, Vanguard nuclear ballistic missile submarines and again the uh, British frigates, the type um, 22 and 23 figure, uh, frigates which you know we've all come to know and love and looked uh, looked at in different uh, publications so these were laid down in the 1980s um, so there's four type 23's and Two, uh, four type 22s we've got a fleet replenishment ship which again provides for a good target and uh, a couple of or four uh, Manchester guided missile destroyers and again these are weighing or displacing around 3,500 tons which is about the same size as a lot of the frigates that we've looked at earlier tonight. Okay, so I'll uh, go on. We'll look at the French as well. Let's finish it off. I know you're curious. So in the French... What have we got? There's some heavy things in here as well. So we've got uh, a landing ship. Um, the Charles de Gaulle, the nuclear-powered aircraft carrier for the French. Um, so it carries about 38 aircraft, including uh, helos and fixed wing. The landing ship we mentioned. We've got uh, combat cruiser, the Colbert, 
uh, named after um, cruisers from the First World War, I think it was. This was about 1960s vintage. Uh, some ballistic missile submarines, which are quite large, and some more standard subs, or diesel powered. Um, a nice mix of, uh, it's another dock landing ship. Uh, some frigates. Actually, French frigates always remind me of that Dave Allen joke about the four French froggy frigates on the horizon. So that'll be Admiral Nelson and Hardy at the Battle of Trafalgar. I won't go into that now, but I'm sure you can find it on YouTube. And some small frigates as well. So the, uh, in this case, the Destien. Uh, how's my French accent? Terrible. Um, the Destien de Elvis. Okay, you can read it. Do it with a French accent. These are tiny frigates of about 1,100 tons each. But then we move up to, where was it? The Lafayette class of frigates, around 3,300 tons. So there's a big size difference between them, even though they're both classed as frigates. And then the French did have some uh, destroyers from the 1970s which were displacing 6,000 tons. The Duquesne, again, it's a famous uh, French ship name. So, lots and lots of goodies. Um, I will point out that that was my Christmas present for me, uh, or one of my Christmas presents for me. And as you can see, I've got a lot of painting in there, plus the... Um, no, come back into focus plus the uh, Russians that I have, or the Soviets, I should say, that I have to paint here um, already. So all up, um, all of these vessels cost me a princely sum of about a hundred pounds, um, mm -hmm. adding on some postage. Um, it's actually quite good value. Oh, sorry about the jerking people. It's actually quite good value for the number of vessels that are there. So you can see I've got a lot of painting coming up in the not too distant future. Um, I can recommend Navor. Their service is brilliant. Um, I sent a letter to them. Yes, that is folded up, put it in an envelope, took it down to the post office, posted it. I will admit that I posted it from Australia when I was there visiting mum just before Christmas. Um, and the stuff, the uh, ships left Navor about seven days after, six days after I posted the letter. And they arrived in the Philippines um, about uh, a week and a half, two weeks after posting the letter from Australia. Mind you, it then took about a month, a month and a half for them to make their way from the airport in Manila to the Makati Central Post Office, which is about six kilometers okay that's all i've got for tonight this is uh an unboxing i can tell you that i have uh order of uh, napoleonic six millimeters coming in from bacchus i have some uh, french modern um, uh, tanks and uh, armored personnel carriers and infantry coming in from heroics and ross I have some 6mm Ancient Greeks coming in from Rapier. Um, and I think I think that's about all I've got from my Christmas presents. Um, I did receive my Fujimi 1 3000th plastic ships, but you'll see them uh, reviewed and uh, painted and photoed and put up in still photos on Tomo's hull because I don't have a good enough setup here to film myself. Excuse me. To film myself while I'm actually painting the things. Okay, so let me wish you uh, good night at the moment. I'm going to head off to bed now. It's now uh, just past midnight in Manila. Um, it's winter in Manila, so it's a very chilly 31 degrees during the day and 24, 25 degrees at night. I'm sort of waiting for summer to arrive where it becomes a somewhat warmer 33 degrees during the day. 
uh, ask me again why I like uh, living in the Philippines. Anyway, good night all, and uh, we'll see you again soon for another unboxing. Uh, enjoy. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, this. And as I said, at £100, there's a lot of ships in here. Very, very good value.